Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the first video in the KQL Advanced series. In today's session, we'll give an overview of the Advanced series, discuss parsing, and begin to learn how to parse dynamic objects using Evaluate Bag Unpack. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. If you're new to KQL or new to the 10 minute KQL channel, we recommend first having a solid foundation on the following topics. These concepts were taught in the beginner and intermediate series. The lessons in the advanced series will assume a general understanding on these topics. So if you get stuck anywhere, you can go back and refresh. In the advanced series, we'll focus on several sessions that teach how to parse dynamic objects. We'll make sessions on manipulating strings, using functions, decoding, and regex basics. After the advanced series, we're interested in creating a security analyst series that teaches both KQL techniques as well as general investigation techniques and best practices. We'll select a free system that you can practice live investigations in realistic environments that simulate modern threat actors and attack sequences. The first general topic we want to cover in the advanced series is how to manipulate dynamic objects. If you remember the first lesson in the intermediate series, we talked about the KQL data types, how to cast a different data types, and how to verify the data type in the schema. Fields that are set as a string data type can easily be changed to dynamic using either to dynamic or parse JSON. While it's more common to see parse JSON, we wanted to mention to dynamic because you may see it in some queries. Personally, I prefer to dynamic because it follows the same logical format for casting, just like to string or to int. Remember, when you cast to a dynamic data type, you lose some level of functionality. You may find you trigger an error when trying to use distinct or summarizations. And in these cases, the field should be cast back to a string or other data type before performing these actions. In this example, I have five fields projected. I see the status and device detail fields are JSON objects full of key value pairs in curly braces. When we look at the schema, we can confirm those two fields are a dynamic data type. We want to use summarize so we can get a count of each combination of the fields. When we try to summarize, we get an error because of the dynamic data type. When we cast both data types to string, then the summarization works. Remember that JSONs are key value pairs that are in curly braces with objects separated by commas. Many times these JSON objects are stored in the database as a dynamic data type, just like our previous example. But you can also find them stored as a string data type. While it's possible to parse the data we want with either a string or dynamic data type, it's easier to do it with dynamic. Let's talk briefly about parsing. When we use the term parse or parsing, we're referring to taking values of interest from inside the object and separating them in some way that makes sense to us. You can also have nested JSONs, which are JSONs inside of other JSONs. This adds an additional layer of complexity. So we'll teach parsing nested JSON objects in a future session. When we examine the JSON within the status field, we see it has two keys. The first is the error code, and the second is the failure reason. We also see that sometimes there's only one key, and other times there are more than two keys, including an additional details key. If we're only interested in extracting the error code key from the JSON and placing it into his own field, we can. Or if we want, we can take all the keys and make them into their own fields. In previous lessons, we taught about being efficient and using minimal resources to optimize the query. We teach this because as the size of your data sets grow, optimization matters. There can be a breaking point when you're asking a query to do too much and it can fail. But if the query was optimized properly, it would provide results or consume fewer resources, which may equate to lower costs. It's always best practice to try and make your queries as efficient as possible. 
That being said, the first parsing technique we'll teach is the easiest, but it uses the most amount of resources, and it's the least efficient. If you want to make all the keys inside a dynamic JSON object into their own individual fields, you can use Evaluate Bag Unpack. We use Evaluate in many different scenarios in the advanced series, and we'll discuss it more in depth in future sessions. In this case, you can think of the dynamic JSON as a bag, and we want to unpack each item from the bag into its own column. If you try to use bag unpack on a string, it will fail, so be sure to cast the JSON object to a dynamic data type if needed before using bag unpack. Also, each item placed in the bag can have its own unique data type. Just because the JSON object is cast to a dynamic doesn't mean all the objects inside retain the dynamic data type when taken out of the property bag. So let's go back to our original five fields, where we know two of the fields are dynamic JSON objects. Let's type in evaluate bag unpack. Then we'll place the name of the field we want to parse out in the parentheses. When we execute the query, we see the original four fields on the left haven't changed, but as we scroll right, we see all the keys that were inside the JSON associated with a status field are now parsed into their own individual fields. We should also take note that the original status field is no longer present. Once the information is parsed, it can then be queried. In this example, we want to only see records where the parsed out error code field is not zero. Before we parse the keys in the status field, the field was a dynamic data type. If we look at the schema after using bag unpack, we can see the device detail field with our second JSON is still in dynamic. But the three newly created fields that represent the keys that used to be in the status field are in a string or long data type after taking them out of the bag. Now let's use bag unpack on the device detail field to parse the JSON. When we scroll to the right, we see that all the keys from both dynamic JSONs are now in their own fields. When we look at the schema, we also see the data types of the keys inside both JSONs have still retained their original values once unpacked. One thing to watch out for is duplication of field names. If the table already includes an exact match of the key name you're trying to unpack, it will produce an error. In this example below, we have the same five fields we did before, but instead of the user agent field, we change the name to error code because it's one of the key names inside the dynamic JSON object in the status field. If we try to use bag unpacked on the status field, we get an error now because it can't produce a second field with the exact same name unless we tell it how to handle that error. If you receive an error like this, it can be resolved by adding a prefix to all the parsed out fields. We can add a comma after the status field name, add quotes, and then add something easy like an underscore character. When we execute the query, we no longer see an error, and all the newly parsed out fields associated with a status JSON all have an underscore prefix. You aren't limited to an underscore prefix, it may add value if you name the prefix as the original field name to help you remember where each field came from. This can be especially useful when you have more than one JSON object to parse. Since the objects inside the property bag retain their data type when taken out of the bag, we may have a use case where we want to cast a new data type as we're taking them out of the bag. In this example, we have the device detail field that has a dynamic JSON. If we wanted to change three keys to a dynamic data type as they were taken out of the property bag, we could do it like this. When we look at the schema, we can now see that all three fields are cast to dynamic data types. Again, this is the most resource intensive way to parse a dynamic JSON object. In future sessions, we'll discuss how to extract individual keys into their own fields for reduction of resources used and to add precision to the query. For homework today, we use a free log analytics workspace 
found at aka.ms slash LADemo. If you need instructions on how to access this free data set, refer to session seven of the beginner series. Use the Azure Diagnostics table to first filter for audit events in the category field. Then parse all the contents of the field titled additional fields. When you do this, be sure to label the new fields with a prefix that makes sense to you. Lastly, to complete the query, filter the results to display only unique resource URIs. That's all for today's session on Evaluate, Bag, and Pack. In the next session, we'll continue parsing dynamic objects using Extend. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.